Hey, this is Scott from CircuitBasics.com. Today I'm going to do a quick video about how to connect your Raspberry Pi directly from a laptop or desktop with an Ethernet cable. Now, connecting to your Pi through a shared network is fine, but connecting to it directly is a lot faster since you aren't sharing bandwidth with other computers. Plus, you can get access to your Pi without even being on a network. So if you ever travel somewhere and you can't get on Wi-Fi or you don't have access to the router, you can just connect your Pi straight from your computer if you have an Ethernet cable. To set this up, we'll be adding a static IP, your gateway IP, and your domain name server's IP addresses to a file called dhcpcd.conf. So let's get started and I'll show you how to do it. I'm going to be doing this with a new installation of Raspbian Jesse, but the same process should also work with newer versions of Raspbian Wheezy too. The first thing we need to do is find out the IP address of the Ethernet adapter on the computer you want to connect from. To do this, we can go to the Network Connections window. In Windows 8, you can find it by right-clicking on the Windows icon. And on earlier versions of Windows, you should be able to find it in the Control Panel. Alright, now here we have four ways to connect to a network. We have Bluetooth, our local area network, Wi-Fi, and Ethernet. We want to see the Ethernet connection settings, so right-click on that and select Properties. Now scroll down and find the line that says Internet Protocol Version 4, TCP IPv4. Select that, then click the Properties button. If you see that Obtain an IP address automatically is selected, we're going to need to find your Ethernet adapter's IP address using ipconfig in the Windows command prompt. And I'll get to that later, but if use the following IP address is selected, go ahead and write down the IP address shown. This is the IP address your Ethernet adapter uses. So now, in case your IP address wasn't shown in the Ethernet properties window, you can find it by going to the Windows command prompt. You can either right click on the Windows icon in Windows 8, or find it in the control panel. Now enter ipconfig, and it'll show all the network configuration settings we're using now. Now look for something that says Ethernet Adapter Ethernet. And under this heading, you'll find the Auto Configuration IPv4 address. Go ahead and write this down. That's the IP address your computer's Ethernet adapter uses. OK, now we need to find out what our default gateway IP address is. And to do that, we can log into the Pi. So I'm going to open up PuTTY. And at the command prompt, enter route-ne. This will show you the default gateway IP address used by your Pi's Ethernet connection. And the default gateway IP for your Pi's Wi-Fi connection, too. We'll need this later, so let's write this down. The last IP addresses we need to get are the domain name server IP addresses. These are what the Pi uses to find websites on the internet. When you enter a web address like www.google.com, the Pi first sends that web address to domain name servers to find out the actual numerical IP address of the website. After it gets the website's uh, numerical IP address from the domain name servers, it then uses that to access the website directly. So enter cat forward slash etc forward slash resolv dot conf to see your domain name server IPs. And we're going to need all of these. So you can just select them and control C to copy. I'll paste these over here in the pen. Alright, now we're ready to edit the dhcpcd.conf file. 
So enter sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash dhcpcd dot conf. And then go all the way down to the end. Now I get the code. I have this posted on my blog if you want to copy it, but it's short enough. You can just type it in after watching this video. But the blog post also has uh, all the steps we just went through if you'd rather follow along that way. I'll link to this in the description. So here's the code we need to add. I'll just copy this. and paste it in at the end of the DHCPCD file. Now these are the IP addresses I used for my own setup. You'll need to change them out with your own IP addresses. Alright, so to find your static IP address here, take your Ethernet adapter's IP address, which is the one we found in the network connections window, or your auto configuration IPv4 address, and change the last number to another number between 1 and 255. So, for example, my Ethernet adapter's IP is 169.254.81.78. So I changed the 78 to 99 to get 169.254.81.99. Now this is the new IP I'll use to log into the Pi for my laptop. Now for the static router's IP, all you need to use is your default gateway IP for this. So just put that in there. And the last thing to add is your domain name server IP addresses. You'll need to add all of them on a single line separated by spaces. And if you've already set up a static IP address for your Wi-Fi connection too, the WLAN 0 settings can go in here just like this. And once that's done, we can control X to exit and save. Now you want to reboot the Pi. And then connect it to your computer with your Ethernet cable. And then log in using the static IP you just created. You'll probably notice that's a lot faster to connect. And up here you can see that we're logged in with the static IP we just created. And this is the IP of the computer we're connecting from. The last thing to do is to test to see if we have a connection to the internet. And we can do that by pinging Google. So enter sudo ping www.google.com. And if everything's working correctly, you'll see a list of the data packets being sent and received by the Pi. And you can press Control C to stop the ping. It'll tell you how many packets were transmitted, how many were received, and how many were lost. Alright, that wasn't so bad. Now you should be able to tell that connecting to your computer directly is a lot faster way to access your Pi. It's also great because you can connect to your Pi anywhere. You don't need to log in to an external network or have access to the router like you do with Wi-Fi and other shared network connections. Alright, well, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe if you like these videos, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or problems setting it up. Alright, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.